back. Vorda Kroon is back with more immersion than ever. Have you ever wanted to walk into battle where men either side of you have lost every single one of their limbs? You just know that there's a crying wife at home with three sick children? Daddy ain't coming anytime soon. Well, at least not in that way. Vordacroon was almost a mix between your mountain blades and your total wars. You take control of these medieval armies, whether it's on a campaign map with diplomacy, taking and capturing castles, or into the actual battles itself. Third person camera style, on horseback, on foot, with catapult in arms. Mechanically, it leaves some things to be desired. Yet I think there's a lot of promise here, especially with some awesome things like, well, the graphics for one. The sound design is beautiful, especially hearing catapult balls whack into the castle behind you. And then when you get up close and personal, hacking and slashing combat feels very smooth now. It used to feel way more sluggish, but once you get the hang of it, you actually start to understand what they're going for. It's not skill based, it's very much immersion and cinematic based, but you get some cool finisher and execution moves if you get in the right position at the right time. But I've spoken enough about it. Let's actually go and test out some of the awesome siege stuff in Vordacroon. So the Siege is currently experimental. It has recently come out and they don't have all that much polish to it. The land battles seem like they're going their own direction now, but heading into it you can either attack or defend. Once again choosing between cavalry, mixed army, infantry or defensive, it doesn't seem like they have specific set classes just for sieges, but we make do with what we've got. Then of course you get to pick your Lord. Whether you want to be her then Grafron. Look, I'm English. We're not, we're not very accommodating, unfortunately. And as it fades up, the armies hove into view. The camera panning over to the side, making quick work of the. Oh. <laughs> okay, look, we're in the wall. Give it a chance, man. Give it a chance. But of course, in Vordacroon, you get your deployment phases. You can wait till night, add fire arrows, put in catapults, which of course we do, because we do want to bombard from the top of hell. And there's a button at the bottom that I'm not quite sure. Oh, well, it seems like the button at the bottom sally forth. I guess that's what we're doing. Get out, lads. Get out of the walls. My men then start to make their way down and they get a bit stuck at the gate. Archers on top of the walls and oh my word, that guy just took an arrow to the skull. Right in the noggin like Kim Kardashian back in the 90s. As you can see, the AI leaves a lot to be desired, but the beautiful textures and physics on the cloth and people burning, screaming, oh, it makes me feel like I'm back in boarding school again. I take an arrow to the chest, but you know what? That's fine. I don't, I don't need that chest anyway. I can grow a new one. I did then slowly but surely work out how to order my men. Okay, look, I hadn't played this for a while and it all started off as a little bit of a disaster. The enemy had switched on fire arrows and whilst I tried to rally my men again, catapult balls came in sending my guys flying and it felt like a scene out of Saving Private Ryan. Right, we probably should make our way back into the gates. This seems like a disaster. You know what? Let's try this again. Okay, well, it's snowy now. The Siege of Akmar. I don't know what the variations or the differences are in the siege forts and things that they have going on, but I mean, it's snowy. What more could you want? I've now decided that I will try and play this properly. I'll set my men up in the correct positions, making sure we've got archers on the walls with crossbows as well. We'll make sure our dismounted knights are facing the door. It's always an advantage, but the enemy also have many, many catapults and fire arrows that are being sent in. I really love the impacts on the men. I mean, look, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I love seeing a man crawling along the floor as he's bleeding to his death but geez, it never looked better than in Vordacroon. Let's set up our guys at the gate, try and make a sort of wedge formation, a V if you will, get them into that ambush, making sure that the enemy can never escape this. They will regret everything. The screams of my men haunt me to this day, but we must push on, we must carry on fighting. And then the battering rams open the gate. I decide, look, I can't be fighting on horseback here. 
I ain't that kind of guy. I love chicken skewers as much as the next guy, but I gotta get in there. I then realized that you can order your troops to attack in the right positions. I pull back my archers to make sure that they don't get too slaughtered. Yeah, as we'll see in a little bit, they pull out their maces and try and get in the ham anyway. The enemy start coming up on siege ramps up onto the wall to try and flank my men and we fight and fight. There's a guy crawling along the floor and it is a terrible disaster. Jesus Christ, this is terrifying. They have some pretty nice outfits though, I really like it. But it's time for me to get stuck in. I have an axe, I have a shield and I'm slicing and dicing. Now, as mentioned, the combat within this game has room for improvement, definitely. In terms of skill base, there isn't really anything in terms of directional combat like a mountain blade or a chivalry or Mordhau has. It is more just a left click, swing, and hope you don't get hit. One thing I really love though are the fire arrows coming in from above. It made it absolutely terrifying. And you can see them pinging off the armor, hitting on the dead bodies on the floor, or whacking into your shield when you least expect it, just hoping crossing your fingers that they don't smash you in the face. As the battle rages on, you start to really see the limitation of the engine. What they're going for in Vordacroon is very clearly a big scale battle, yet they just don't have the AI in order to do that. The coding just seems like it is so, so basic that people get stuck everywhere. There's guys that are getting outnumbered, swarmed, slaughtered, and you will end up just being gangbanged by many, many enemies. And look, I love that as much as the next guy, but in this kind of situation, we need to try and win our battles. As mentioned, there are some really cool takedowns. If you get up and close with a certain weapon, you're able to trigger an animation that looks pretty nice. It doesn't happen every single time, but look, stabbing someone in the chest with an ax, what more could you really want in this situation? As the enemy push in, my front line starts to dissolve. I actually have some men run away. I, they literally run away. I go and try and find them in the bushes, but they are, they are nowhere left to be seen. So I head back to the front line to fight with my weaker spearmen, yet I am being surrounded by many, many men until eventually we take one for the team. But ha we're back. Our men have regained their strength. They've regrown their limbs and we are now the Pope, it seems. But we are the attackers. This seems like a similar map to the first one and I accidentally knock over some of my men, but I managed to place down some wooden barricades for my crossbows to hide behind. Of course, we have a battering ram and we have siege ramps for our lads. This game, it looks gorgeous and I feel like that is one thing that keeps coming up over and over again and perhaps it could be a bit of a negative because it shies people away from the real criticisms of this title which there are very very many but with such a small development team in fact I think it could possibly be a solo guy there is nothing more impressive than getting something to look this good and even in some ways feel really good it doesn't necessarily feel good in terms of oh, I'm really contributing to this battle in a big way, but it does make you feel good where you actually feel like you're in a medieval war and it feels bloody and brutal. I think something that's gone amiss in medieval media in the past is that it seems to be this romanticized version of war. We always get brutal World War One and World War Two films and games, but when it goes to older historical stuff, all of a sudden it seems like knights in shining armor is beautiful and everybody is crisp and fighting each other in honorable duels to the death. And this game actually tries to go towards that more realism of war. This was bloody, it was brutal. People were screaming in pain as they were hit from either side by projectiles. It was a horrific sight. And I'm really glad that some game has actually had the balls to try and recreate that in a, I would say, relatively respectful way. As we push forward, our catapults do bits. They take down parts of the wall, our battering ram get through the gate and our ramps are ready, so we charge forward. I accidentally hit the retreat button as well, but we managed to get those guys back eventually, don't, don't you worry. They actually decide to sally forth. They've decided that, look, it's not worth us waiting. We must try and do what we can to defend our beautiful palisades. So now we're outside the walls. Let's get our couch lance going and oh, good hit. I break the tip of my spear, but without the tip, I don't need much more than my mace. 
So we get that out and we send a man absolutely flying. Yeah, as always, it is time to dismount. It is very tricky doing cavalry combat within this game. And it looks so good when you're up close and personal. It just looks fantastic. What more could you want? The sun glinting off the armor, the death and destruction and blood, people screaming from either side, and we manage to push our way up to the gate. As the enemy fall back, I realize that I'm stuck within my men. However, it turns out that you can actually perform executions and attack your own guys if you're stuck in them. <laughs> yeah, I actually level up by killing my own men, but hey-ho. We send some of the enemy back, they start to retreat, but it isn't quite enough. These spears are really putting up a prickly wall, and I get a little bit stuck at the back. There is a moment where a whole volley of arrows come in and destroy about four or five enemies, which is a gorgeous sight to see. And then, well, and then the inevitable happens. I get what I think is hit in the back with a friendly arrow. Yeah. Great. I guess it's still immersive. We're not wrong there.